So now uh, I have Chantal Lynn Carpentier, who is the president chief of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development Office in New York. Uh, she was previously a coordinator for the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. She worked on sustainable development goals negotiations and the Rio Plus 20 conference. Um, she had interest on environmental, economic, and trade issues. Also, she has a PhD in agricultural and environmental economics. Uh, so, Chantal, uh, I mean, you, you are a former colleague of mine, in a sense, I've worked at the United Nations for, for 33 years, uh, so, and in New York as well. Uh, so, I want to hear from you how you see the concept of uh, human security evolving, uh, and uh, uh, what, what is for you uh, the value of human security uh, in a culture of peace? What should be what should we be doing? And how do you see also uh, the concrete practices as that I referred to before, shaping? Do we have really concrete practices beyond statements, uh, beyond policies that are somehow uh, following one after the other one uh, and, and, and uh, agreements taken, but not necessarily followed? Uh, what, what do you think is happening right now? Chantal, do you think? Thank you so much, Donato. Thank you so much for WASP for organizing this and inviting me. And, and I'm honored and uh, uh, privileged to be here with the, the, pa the panelists on this uh, on this session. So, Donato, as you mentioned, you know, and you and human security is an approach to assist member states in identifying and addressing widespread and cross-cutting challenges to the survival, livelihood, and dignity of their people. And, and as we all know, it's achieved through the protection and empowerment strategies for all built on four principles, people-centered, comprehensive, context-specific, and prevention-oriented. Um, and it's proven um, uh, ex uh, extremely useful for the UN um, in terms of support we provide to member states um, across sectors um, and, and um, especially, and this is where I'm just going to cut my presentation and go straight to it, in terms of addressing the root cause and manifestation of the challenges uh, facing developing countries and where um, human insecurity is present. And this is why I think when you ask where is human security going, I think human security is the perfect concept to help us implement the sustainable development goals and the 2030 agenda. Why? Because as I mentioned, um, its principle are to look at the root cause. When we add the, the Millennium Development Goals, um, the MDGs, they were mostly social goals and not looking at the root cause of poverty and equalities and um, starvation. The SDGs actually look at the root cause and provide um, uh, means of implementation to address the issues. It also, the human security framework allows us to do what is absolutely needed if we want to have a chance at achieving the SDGs, which is to look at the interconnectedness and interdependence amongst the SDGs, but also amongst countries. And I'll just give a quick example here. A lot of countries, including uh, the EU right now, is talking about putting in place carbon border measure adjustment um, to support their green um, deal. And, and that's wonderful that the EU is going forward with this green deal and they want to make sure that they protect um, their industry from leakages of carbon in other countries and for their competitiveness. But what UNCTAD, at UNCTAD we've done is to look at the spillover effect on developing countries on this policy. And is this the best policies to achieve that? It does achieve the goals of preventing mildly leakages and it protects the competitiveness of the industries, but it also has large impact on developing countries, which are already uh, extremely affected already by um, the COVID-19 pandemic, the ensuing economic crisis, as well as climate change um, impact. And they have to basically adapt much quicker than we do in the North, because we all know that in tropical and subtropical environment, climate change has a much harsher impact already. And where does human security concept and sustainable development come in is also, you might have heard the Secretary General Guterres say that we're now 
um, we need to urgently address the three crises facing humanity. And by that, you mean climate change, pollution, and biodiversity. I would add a fourth one, especially post COVID, it was just ex uh, exemplified with COVID, it, which is inequality. So we have four crises that we need to urgently address and we can't possibly address them independently. We have to address them together. And Donato, to answer also your question, these, um, it, these three crises, um, the three environmental one, interconnected one, are creating a lot of hardship in food insecurity and poverty in developing countries, especially the people that are least able to adapt in, um, in to these changes. Um, and that have no insurance or perhaps um, uh, irrigation system when they have a drought. Um, and so it is creating uh, human insecurity. And then if you put on top of it, the inequality that are being exacerbated, not um, including and perhaps just uh, exemplified by the fact that um, billions of students have been put out of school, but some of the especially in rural in urban areas and in developed nations, students were quickly able to go back to return to online learning. That was not the case for a lot of, of students in developing countries and in rural areas in developing countries. Um, and that means that we further exacerbated these inequalities and created a, a lack um, in terms of education. Um, the application of human security, the, therefore, um, it also recognizes that we need to look at factors that impede economic growth and poverty reduction uh, localized, looking at the specific situation in one country um, and, and to look at deprivation such as education and health and, and care um, and environmental degradation in these contexts specific and therefore requires a uh, context specific solution. And um, what we don't have right now is basically a system of education and therefore leaders that are able to address these challenges in an interconnected way, the way they need to be. Instead, we use isolated knowledge, silo approaches, and stakeholders such as government or the private sector of the financial sector, the multilateral development bank, each thinking in their turn that they can solve these problem alone, while we know that we can only solve these problem by working together. We need multidisciplinary um, uh, training, we need cooperation training, and we need also systems approach thinking as well as entrepreneurship mindset if we want to address these issues. Um, and, and the disruption that we've seen in education, and just to give an example of the interconnectedness of these, has not only affected students, it went well beyond the education system. Closure of education institution and the provision of essential services to children and communities, including nutritious food, so we saw an increase in food insecurity, affect the ability of many parents, especially women to work as their care work went up 30 hours over the, the pandemic and increased the risk of violence against women and girls, creating further wants and therefore not getting us closer to this human security. Education, Donato, as we know, is a pillar of the 2030 framework for sustainable development, especially if we can revise the way what we teach and how we teach it with an approach of leaving no one behind and starting with the furthest uh, behind first. Um, and so I'll leave it at this and look forward for further discussion and then giving you some specific example of what I think uh, is needed to teach our future leaders to have the right skill to address these four interconnected crises that create the want and human insecurity. Thank you, Chanteline. Thank you very much.